Hi, Dave from Duke's Fitness Center, Rear Health Matters. Today we're going to talk a little bit about stretching hip flexors and strengthening them. So, uh, very common if you're an active person or an extremely inactive person. Um, for example, if you have a desk job, I'm not saying that you wouldn't be active outside of that, but if you're sitting for long periods of time, hip flexors can really tighten up. Hip flexors are a complex series of muscles, they're not just one group. Um, there's multiple groups uh, involved. Anything that involves pulling your leg up, for example, flexing the hip. So that type of movement, those muscles are involved coming around from the glute as well as uh, in front of the quad and connecting to your abdominal and inner thigh. So foam roller is what we're going to start with today. Um, and if you don't have a foam roller, a ball can work uh, in a similar fashion here. So what we're going to do is just use the, the end. So I'm on my right side here. I'm going to use this section and we're only going to lean into that. So where your uh, hip connects into your upper thigh, we're just going to roll back and forth on that, supporting yourself with your arms and the other foot. Now you can turn and feel that spot where those muscles may feel tight, and we want to work in through that range of motion nice and easy. Breathing through it, trying to get those muscles to relax a little bit, and this is loosening up through that hip joint. And again, we always want to make sure we're doing both sides. You may find that one side is tighter than another, but it's important to make sure that we aim for finding as much balance as we can. So again, you're going to shift that foam roller over and work into that. So this is connecting where, again, your hip and abdominal muscles into your psoas, um, connecting to your femur, and into your quadricep. So that upper leg, again that pull as you lift the leg, all those muscles work together. So you're going to be able to find that spot. Now I'm rolling into the quad a little bit just because I know it's tight through there as well. Everything is connected, so really listen to the body, take your time and loosen those things up. So as I mentioned, if you don't have a foam roller, some sort of firmer ball, this is a uh, sand filled medicine ball, so it's got a little bit of give but it's, it's fairly stiff. That's something that you can work in as well. Or even a tennis ball. Um, the smaller the surface area, the more acute spot you're going to be able to get into that muscle and really shift through there. So lots of options there. The other thing we're going to work on is the inner thigh. So again, hip flexors work into the inner thigh here. What we're going to do is have you Straighten the leg that you're not using, and we're going to bend the knee the leg you are using. We're going to slowly work side to side with this. Begin breathing through it. Adjust pressure, adjust angles. Take your time with that, and really try to keep your spine neutral as you do that. So again, each side, making sure we're balancing it out. And if foam roller is not something that you have, you can aim for something like a firmer ball uh, as well. So next what we're going to work with is a resting lunge position. And when I say resting, we do want to have the foot activated back here. We don't want to be resting back here. We want to have the balls of the feet there. And we're going to work on pressing into something uh, that's firm. So this, this weighted bar is going to help you with this. So keeping good alignment, pushing in through the heel on my front leg, getting my pelvis, so tailbone tucked, pressing into that bar, breathe through it. You're gonna feel that stretch on your hip flexor here. And again, we shift. I'm going through this a little faster than you want to really do. We wanna make sure pressure is straight up and down, ball of the foot, good alignment, tucking the tailbone, engaging your glute on your back leg. It's gonna help you really stretch through that hip flexor area. All right, now, if you don't have a bar, I want to try something a little bit different. Staying in the same lunge position, again, tailbone tucked, we're going to have you raise the arm by the side that's back. And we're going to have you just go across the body. You're going to feel that through your oblique and again into your hip. So depending on how much range you have, how tight things are, this may feel like it's too much. If you're zinging already here, don't worry about getting into that. That's a progression that you can make 
um, depending on how things feel down the road. And lastly, anything like a bench or a couch, a chair, something you can get your legs up off the floor with. We're just simply going to work on pelvic tilt. So lifting the hip up and then pushing down. Breathing through that. Basically, you're going to get that range of motion in your hips, which is going to help you with your upper leg, as well as that connection into your lower back. All those muscles work together. And what this all comes down to, body awareness and posture. All right, so if you want to take some pressure off from the low back, simply lift it up. Kind of a bridge situation. Takes that pressure off. Bridges can work really good to help you stretch through your hip flexor here as well, feet on the floor, keeping alignment. I know I'm going through a lot of different things, but the key is getting to know your body better is going to help you feel better in the long run. Take the time. It's not just about going out really hard and working, um, you know, intensity all the time. You do want to get some intensity. You do want to get some resistance training. You do want to get some cardio. But keep in mind, we need to recover. We need to listen to the body and make adjustments. I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's so important to get to know how your body moves and how to take away some of that stress. Um, you know, it feels great to get a good workout and it feels like you're relieving all the stress, but it can cause tension days after, depending on how intense you've got it. Um, so those are just a few exercises that you can do to help loosen up your hip flexors. One last one here on the bench. Um, this one we're going to work on just extending your leg, keeping your hips facing forward, lengthening that leg back, engage the loop on your back leg, both feet facing forward, tuck the tailbone, and then shift it back. So we're getting that little pelvic tilt, loosening it up, and you're going to feel that here as well as in your front hip, and then simply shifting the other direction. So lengthening it first. Pelvic tilt and shift. That mobility in this section, really important. Great for um, reminders of how to do a proper squat and deadlift, getting those glutes to get engaged. Posture starts from the ground up. So shifting weight front to back, you're going to look at slight pressure into the balls of your feet. Then we're going to make sure that we've got that slight bend of the knees, tailbone tucked, torso tall, shoulders back and head neutral. This is going to help get you in good alignment. You want to make sure the glutes are engaged as you stand. So tucking that tailbone, just like at the top of a deadlift, you want to make sure we don't have to be aggressive with it, we want those muscles engaged. That's going to take pressure off your low back and help you feel better. Take breaks in between your workday if you are sitting a lot. These are some tips that we can help you feel better and get to know your body better. Nate from Duke's Fitness Center, where your health matters. Thanks for watching our video. If you'd like to learn more or just follow us along, we've got a free option to subscribe right here on YouTube. We'd love to see you. We'd love to hear from you and help you and support you with your health goals. Nate from Nutrition Center, where your health matters.